How would you respond to St. Cyril of Jerusalem placing your left hand as a throne for communion for communion in the hand? Uh, how would we respond to uh, St. Cyril of Jerusalem? Yeah, we talked about that in the, in the militant book. Uh, you put your hand out. First of all, you're receiving your, uh, the, the line of St. Saint, uh, Saint Cyril where he says, you know, make it. Is it Saint, Saint Jerome? Jerome. Saint Cyr- it says St. Cyril of Jerusalem. Uh, I thought it was a different saint, but anyway, whoever it was, you know, a saint uh, uh, back in uh, the very early centuries of the church said, you know, when you go to receive, you know, put your hand out, make a throne, you know, that whole business, which is the really about the only rationale you ever hear uh, today. And they say, well, they used to do it that way. Let's go back to the way they used to do it. Okay, let's go through this philosophically a couple of ways. First of all, if we want to say, well, let's go back to the way it was done in the early centuries. Okay. I'm all for that. We can receive Holy Communion like this. We can also, when it comes to confession, put on sackcloth and ashes if we have to confess adultery or some one of the one of the immoral uh, uh, actions. We can sit out in sackcloth and ashes outside the church and not step in for seven years and everybody know what our sin was. I don't hear any clamoring for people to go back to the way we used to do that sacrament. So why is there this great appeal to tradition, way early tradition with reception of Holy Communion, but not, for example, with confession? Um, But that's an aside. Uh, There's a number of things to look at in this. The first and I think most important thing is there's a reason the church stopped doing this. And the reason the church stopped doing this is because abuses began to creep in. And it's not that it's intrinsically evil to receive Holy Communion like this, like a, like abortion is an intrinsic evil. That's not the question. The question is, what is the effect of this, of receiving Holy Communion like this? Well, the church has already been through this. Uh, you know, there was a, a heresy regarding the Eucharist uh, that a Spanish council was addressing back in the day. I think it was the 8th or ninth century. And uh, there was a heresy that was being addressed. And sort of surrounding that heresy about the Eucharist was also the practice of receiving Holy Communion in the hand. Now, the, the council condemned the heresy. It didn't condemn that as like some mortally sinful thing because it's not. But it, it isn't just, oh, the church used to do that. Well, there are many things the church used to do that through her experience learned Well, while there wasn't anything intrinsically wrong with that, there were some things, unintended consequences that came from that, so now let's correct them. For example, uh, up until the Council of Trent, many Catholics have no idea about this, up until the Council of Trent in uh, 1545 to 1563, uh, uh, there was no such thing as seminaries. There were no seminaries. The priests were, you know, how priests were selected and chosen and this and that was just, it wasn't arbitrary in the sense that they weren't valid, but... The way we think of formal training and two, three years of philosophy, advance, and then four, six years, whatever, depending on what the particular diocese or religious community wants, of formal training, taking classes, all that, that didn't exist in the church. Now, should we say, well, there didn't used to be seminaries and priests just came out and didn't really understand their priesthood, uh, many of them, so let's go back to the way it was then. No, the church learns through her experience in her man-made customs and rituals and approaches to things that, ah, there's something to be gained here. And the second point I would bring out on communion in the hand is communion in the hand was ramrodded through uh, as an acceptable practice and was lied about uh, to Pope Paul VI before he gave permission for it. And when he gave permission for it, it was vastly qualified. And a good example here in the United States uh, and I know this because I was alive when it was going on. I was an altar boy and I saw it firsthand. Uh, communion in the hand was not officially permitted or sanctioned in the church in the United States until 1978. I was an altar boy who was 11, 12, 13 years old in 1971, 72, 73. And we were well down the road, well down the road to reception of Holy Communion in the hand. The pastor came to us as altar boys one day and said, hey, you don't need the patents anymore. We're giving communion in the hand. I was like 10 or 11 or 12. They're like, what? What do you mean? And we, I remember being shocked by that, thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa people can touch people can touch Holy Communion, can touch the host? You, what? And so there was a plan, uh, and we covered this in our um, uh, reception deception uh, uh, reports, you know, whenever we put them up there, they're on the site, reception deception. We covered all of this and said, this was all set up by liberal bishops, Joseph Joseph Bernadine in Chicago, leading the pack on it, of ramming this through against the wishes of the majority of the bishops. 
and telling Rome that, oh, this has, this has started and it's, it's just this big movement now. We can't control it anymore. So, Holy Father, will you give us an indult? And that's an important note to remember here. To receive Holy Communion in the hand is an indult. It is a, a permission to accept you from the standard practice, which is receiving Holy Communion on the tongue. And lots of people just think, oh, this is just how you receive Holy Communion. That is not the preference of the church. It never has been. You could say maybe back in St. Cyril's day, 1,700 years ago it was, but that was 1,700 years ago, and we've learned what happens. Communion in the hand was never intended to be what it has become, and to the degree that you can exempt yourself from that, which is just about, unless there's something wrong with your tongue, uh, you can exempt yourself from that practice. You should really receive Holy Communion in the, uh, uh, on the tongue, and if to the degree you can, kneeling.